Hey, welcome to Speechless this Thursday night. We're live from the SCC studios in White Bear Lake. And today's show, we will have Justice Whitethorn, who is running for state representative in uh, parts of Maplewood, all of North St. Paul, and parts of Oakdale, uh, otherwise known as Area 43B, or House District 43B. Uh, before, and I, I think you're going to love him. I think you're going to love his family. He's got a great family. They're here. And uh, you'll get to know uh, more about Justice Whitethorn than you're going to know about any other candidate running in the race. Uh, you know, it's amazing how little time these candidates spend on TV and how much little interaction there is. This will be your opportunity to call in, ask questions, make comments. Uh, to Justice Whitethorn, uh, who will be running in this area. So you can ask him questions relating to the race and uh, uh, the, the seat that he's running for. Um, but before we get into that, we got a couple of up updates going on. Uh, one about uh, Michelle McDonald, who's running for the Minnesota Supreme Court, and then some rulings that came out yesterday from the Minnesota Supreme Court that I thought were good rulings, they were right rulings, give you a little bit of background on, uh, on those but there are issues that we've talked about on the show about driving property about driving searches and seizures property rights um, great decisions that, that came out so we'll briefly go over them first of all Michelle McDonald uh, who has been on this show is running for the Minnesota Supreme Court uh, has been booted out of the Minnesota Republican State Fair booth and it's a tragedy that this is happening. She's an endorsed candidate. But what happened is the Republican Party Executive Committee had a meeting uh, Tuesday night. It was an email meeting that I understand. And not everybody on the Executive Committee was aware of it. And she was uh, voted, or they changed the rules uh, to who can be in the booth at the convention and made those at the state fair and designed those rules to exclude Michelle McDonald and then voted her uh, out saying she could not be there. However, there is a meeting tonight that uh, a normal meeting and uh, they're going to discuss this. It's going to come up again and some of the other executive committee members have found out about it. But what was interesting in this process is the person leading the charge, as far as I've been told, uh, against Michelle McDonald has been the former state auditor, Pat Anderson, who's the executive uh, committee member from the 4th Congressional District, which would be uh, pretty much most of Ramsey County and then uh, into Washington County, basically from St. Paul going east. Uh, um, she... Uh, Michelle was her ex-husband's divorce attorney, <laughs> and, and Pat Anderson was leading this charge and also voted that uh, she not be there, of course, at the state fair. But uh, in my opinion, Pat Anderson should have recused herself uh, from this matter uh, because of the obvious bias in, in this case. So uh, we'll see what happens tonight, but what we're going to show you a little video clip here of what took place down at the State Fair when Michelle showed up to the uh, Republican Party booth. So let's run that clip. Michelle? Excuse me. Michelle? Who are you, Harley? Excuse me. I'm Harley. Yeah, you're Harley. This is Harley. Excuse me. Can I have you... Uh, no Sorry. No touching. Just making sure that you know nothing is heard over here. Michelle, we're just requesting that you just say what you're saying. I can understand you're nervous, your hand is shaking. That's what I think. But you're yes. nervous too? I'm never nervous. I thought this never was nervous. the Republican Party, it's not Thanks. the surprise party. Sir, there's no reason there's for surprise that. Surprise party? Okay? There's no reason for that. Okay. This is a surprise party? We just we just need, we need to exit the The only memo I got was that uh, it was sent out to the executive committee um, Michelle, I'm not, I'm not that said that, that, that we, 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 we just, let me make a statement, the, the only memo I am aware of is the one that was sent to the executive committee sent out saying that if they don't support endorsed candidates that they should resign. So I'm asking 
Keith to resign. Thank you. Thank you for the statement. I appreciate it. Sir, 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 sir. I, I want to ask, can I, 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 can I, I leave materials I here? Of course you can. Okay. Of course you can. We're just going to ask you to get out of the booth. Here. But you're aware, aren't you? I'm aware. Yeah. Yeah. Could she put her sign up then? Yeah. yeah. Why? I'm an endorsed candidate. Why is that? Because this is not allowed. I'm an endorsed candidate. There's no reason. Why isn't it allowed? What is your name, sir? My Let me name? see who else yeah. is signed. My name's not important, sir. Who are you? Who are you? Why are you here? Yeah, what is your name and who are you? I'm a conflict specialist. What's your name? Are you employed by the Republican Party of Minnesota? Please. Why are you afraid to give your name, sir? What's your name? Who asked you to be here? What is your name? I'm here as a Republican. Are you paid? What's your name? Sir? You're you can, you can oh, you're all all the way important. You're all Republicans. Yes, sir. All right. Interesting video. Um, this was done, taken by Michael Broadcourt. And uh, uh, you can go to the Star Tribune uh, newspaper website to see this video. Uh, he, um, uh, and there's more video there, so I uh, just want to acknowledge that source. The man in the black hat was Bon Clayton. Uh, he is the chair of the Judicial District uh, Chairs Committee for the Republican Party. Uh, Bob Tatro was on the, uh, the elderly man on the right-hand side. The man in black, we do not know who he is. We got a name, Dan. I, I don't know who he is, but if I would have there, I would have gotten hold of the police and told the police that this man here is harassing a Minnesota Supreme Court candidate. He's not telling us his name, who he is, or what he has to do, but he is out there uh, telling her to, uh, you know, leave the booth. And he's not citing any authority, and that's harassment. And uh, he, he knows better. Of course, he's saying um, he's a conflict resolution guy, and it looks like he's creating conflict there. So quite an interesting thing going on. There'll be more updates later on. Okay, we got a phone call. Uh, caller, do you have a comment or question? Okay, I don't have any sound coming out here. Uh, on the right-hand side. Uh, uh, Minnesota Public Radio. Okay, can you start? Really doesn't have can much you information. Caller, can you start over, please? Because we didn't hear the beginning part of what you had to say. Okay, and I was just complimenting you on this very good video to show that. I would never have seen it any other uh, way than watching your show. Well, it was on, it's and on the Star Tribune website. Okay. Michael I Broadcourt be, took uh, that picture. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. The, uh, the, the question I have is that I flipped on the uh, Minnesota Public Radio, and I generally find almost no information there, and it's highly politically charged, so it's hard to believe what they say. They said that, the, I think they said Newman, and I don't know who Newman is. I'm taking that might be the chair of the Republican Party, is saying he's voting for Democrat David Lowell. First of all, is he able to do that according to the rules of the Republican Party? Secondly, what was the justification they gave her from, for, not being, for not being allowed at the state fair? Did they actually put up some sort of phony justification if you were saying she was an endorsed candidate? Uh, third of all, okay, go ahead. Uh, the, they they were reporting on public radio that security, and they didn't say what kind of security. I don't believe removed her from the public Republican boots. What does that mean? Thank you. Well, good good questions there. Uh, Scott Newman is running for the attorney general's office. Uh, and I haven't heard any reports of what he had to say. Keith Downey is the chair of the Republican Party. Uh, in my position, what uh, Michelle McDonald said, their, their maneuver here uh, goes against their, their rules. And, of course, they changed them in, in the middle of the night, um, Tuesday, um, or last night, or Tuesday. No, Tuesday night. And so it's, it's biz bizarre behavior, and I don't think it reflects on them pr very well. Uh, the justification is they wrote in the rules, they changed the rules for the state fair, and uh, basically said anybody that is, on the, uh, is a Republican that is on the ballot uh, has access to the state fair booth, uh, statewide candidate, with some other distinctions. But then at the end, it says the executive committee can remove people if, gives three reasons. The first one doesn't apply. 
um, totally different issue, but the second and third one deal with uh, has been charged with uh, a crime, which Michelle has, or has been, uh, comma, or has been convicted of a crime after they've been endorsed. So understand here, uh, as I read that, the after they've been endorsed is, is pretty key in this thing because uh, being charged with a crime before you've been endorsed and then you got endorsed is, um, it just doesn't make sense. Now what they have written, of course, uh, Tom Emmer, who's running for the 6th Congressional District, twice has been convicted of DUI or DWI, I don't know what it was at that time. Uh, so he can go, uh, even though he's been convicted. Uh, of course, that was 20, 30 years ago that that happened. And uh, he's been very outspoken against DUI. And everybody knows that has done any studying of this case that this uh, Michelle McDonald uh, was not under the influence and this is a bogus charge that is coming up and her rights were violated to go see a judge. So their justification is they, in, in the rule that they wrote uh, two nights before. Of course, the full committee, executive committee was not there. Somebody was talked to that's from the 5th Congressional District last night and they did not know the meeting took place. And then they were given some other facts about this, uh, especially about Pat Anderson. And so uh, there is a meeting tonight. We're going to find out how that goes. So it's an interesting drama that's taking place. And, uh, you know, the Republican Party, the best thing to do would have been to ignore it and just left it alone. And nobody would have been paying attention to it. And But now they made a big deal out of it. I mean, the positive thing out about it, you see Michelle, she's a fighter. Um, being falsely accused of things, um, you have to fight. And you're going to have your uh, protagonists that are going to come after you uh, just because they don't want judicial elections. That's the real fighting that's going on here. And so they'd rather elect a guy that, uh, a DFL hack like Lily Hogg, and who's been involved in Fast and Furious, uh, been involved in St. Paul property owner rights, uh, uh, these are on the bad side of these things, as far as I understand. And also just thinks men are money machines. Uh, and uh, that the value that men provide to their children is only money. Uh, and that's the way the law should be interpreted. And, of course, Michelle McDonald fought that issue and actually won. Uh, she, she filed an amicus brief in support of the father who was just trying to be made a money machine. So, um, you know, that's some of the drama going on there in that case. But caller, thanks for your call on that. Uh, and we'll keep you up to date. Uh, Minnesota Supreme Court had two rulings, well, three rulings come out, but I want to talk at least about one of them. And uh, a gal was pulled over up in Blaine uh, for not signaling. And then she pulled over and was on a side street and uh, where cars can park. And the police officer um, uh, came in and, and it was in a residential, safely parked, and the police officer towed the car. And when you tow a car, then the officers can search the car. And so they did the search, found some meth uh, or some drugs, two small bags of meth and two glass pipes. And the, the, uh, the challenge was that the evidence should be suppressed on the grounds that although the initial stop was proper, the search was unconstitutional because the impoundment was improper. And the court agreed, and this was a 7-0 to zero decision, uh, saying that because Rhodes had not been arrested and her parked vehicle posed no safety threat, the search was unreasonable. And I agree with them on this issue wholeheartedly because just because you're pulled over for a ticket, uh, petty misdemeanor, whatever, uh, I don't even know that this rises to that level, um, that does not give the police authorization to search a car and, uh, or to take you away from the car. That's the amazing thing. Uh, why was she taken away from the car? I'm going to, I haven't had time to read the whole order, but there's no way you lose your car. 
and it gets impounded or you get removed from your car. She would have also had to been arrested for being under the influence or something, but he towed the car. Un unbelievable. Uh, it should not happen if it's just for failing to do your blinker. So interesting order there uh, that came out. Uh, another order that came out was that um, the Minnesota Supreme Court well, we're not going to go into that. That would take too much time. <laughs> but go to the Minnesota Supreme Court website. You can look up these cases. The bottom line was that you just can't take people's property. Uh, the state can't because you, because you want to. Uh, you have to give people a trial. You have to, even if you call it a civil case, you need to give them a trial. And that, to me, that's breaking grounds uh, because that kind of property is taken all the time uh, in civil cases, and to me that requires a jury trial and requires an attorney uh, or a, a defense uh, because they're taking your constitutional protected right to property. And they, they just do it on a whim. And so two good decisions by the Minnesota Supreme Court. Okay, we're going to have